Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of that beautiful quality of God, His majesty, of the grace that He brings to all the children of this funny family, in the name of His love and the understanding of one another's hearts, for which we all strive. In the name of the potential here today, planted like a tiny seed that grows up into a huge tree that in turn sprouts tiny seeds and grows into a huge forest of Anbu. May your words come here and your intentions and your clarity so that it tiny fraction of the beauty of this moment may remain for others to join in and grow in. Amen. Salamu alaikum. Talking with my sister Mariam. A special moment at a special ledge before a special place. It's so easy to look at the beautiful physical adornments of this tableau and this construction. And yet, its very vibration suggests an inner adornment. What for you is the, uh, the inner beauty of this mosque? It was built by God. For starters. There, there were no professionals. And it was made from the time that the snows began until now. It was made in a very short time by people who had never done anything like it before. The experience of, of doing it was so great in the sense of having it written in us, having it inscribed in us, having it done th through us. I think everybody that has had any contact with it can only praise God. When you say it was done through you, what, what has that really meant? It means that literally that no one knows anything about any of these things. The person who was sent here as the marble carver had never carved marble, nor had anyone else. And yet we can look at the uh, fruits of those labors and realize a beautiful job was done. The beauty, we know where the beauty came from. We know whose the beauty is. Uh, we were saying that after having had this experience, we're just asking God for the next, the next work because no doubt that an incredible experience of, of real unity has been has been forged and like a clock you know the clock the way a clock works all the that's how the work was everybody started there was that hum and that kind of great power moving through everyone certainly no one can claim it that's what makes it great we can only be, you know, we can only be very, very grateful for the chance of having it be alive in our midst, and we just ask for it to continue to live. Have New jobs are necessary. <laughs> we need the next job now. Have you had the opportunity to uh, to worship God in this mosque? Inshallah. Could you could you tell us what is that a special thing? Well. We had, as a group, been striving to pray for some time now. And we had been joining together as often as possible at given times, intending to learn to pray. Now what happened today is that the, the, the prayer just leapt out of all the hearts. The sound poured out of all the hearts. We had had experiences in many zikrs previously, in many times of worship where there was barely a sound uttered 
It was just somehow being held back. Something was holding it back in everyone or in some, and it was, it was more of a struggle. And I felt that when we were here, it was just like an eternal anticipation to finally just open the heart and sing and offer everything. And I felt that that, that the beginning, that was the, you know, it started out with a great, with a great force. We have very far to go to learn about what it means to worship God. But I felt he wanted there to be a big sound made today, a big, great, you know, just great praising, great celebration. And I've been in a lot of celebrations in my life, but nothing that compared with this. Is there <clears throat> a cultural significance to what's happened today? I see it more internally. I don't really see it in the context of any external religion at all. Um, I feel that if any building that is offered to God to be used by Him will make a tremendous impact upon everything around it, upon everyone who comes near it. It's very rare to find anything like that in, in anywhere in the world, especially in this country. There are places that are called churches that uh, they were built by construction workers uh, who had no idea what the purpose of the building would be. We almost bought a building for to put, you know, for this thing to happen in, but it wasn't possible. It had to be, it had to be started from the first stone in His name. It had to be given to God from from the beginning until the end. If all the people that gather together in this building have that single intention and maintain that intention, as I felt, I definitely felt that force today, eventually God's will will manifest through this and the lives of everyone will be changed in, in harmony with what he intends for us. There was, for me, almost a majestic quality to Bala's presence today. He looked out at a crowd of five, six, seven hundred people who had gathered as one from all different races and religions. What was the experience for you? Well, I was kind of sitting just to one side of him and also looking out at the same five, six, or seven hundred faces, and it, it was kind of a crowning moment, I felt, that something that he has been telling any number of people for 50 years beginning with a, a group of Hindu people way back in the 40s or 30s or something and and some, some Muslim people uh, later on and some Americans even as early as 30, 20, 20, 30 years ago. And now within the past 14 years since he's been coming to America, uh, people from literally every country, every religion, every racial background, every philosophy, every kind of economic strata. and. Here, here we all were, in one place at one time, with him, hearing exactly the same point which he has been making over and over for all these years, that we are one, that this is only one family. And what, why I say it was a crowning moment, what, what better way of showing that, proving that point, than to have us all gathered here under one roof at one time in one house of God like that. One God. One God. It, it's undoubtedly true that he has attracted a wide diversity of students from backgrounds whose diversities would in other circumstances perhaps prevent people coming together. Why was he able to do that? What has enabled people to cut through the prejudices and open their hearts as one family? Well, as he says, there is only one point. And that point, <clears throat> that point, which can be called God, is within the heart of each person. And because he so firmly believes that that one point is all there is, and because he himself goes to that one point, it's the the one thing that he relates to. When he speaks to you or speaks to me or speaks to anyone, he literally goes and finds that same one point within us and causes it to respond. The 
point within me which is God is the point within you which is God is the point which is with him which is God and it just responds as soon as as soon as it hears itself or sees itself it responds and that is not just a sympathetic response it is a response of oneness it is itself and it is that that oneness that instant harmony of heart to heart that occurs that is the magnetism of Bawa, is the ability to bring people of all these divergent backgrounds together, and is the one point which when you reflect on it, you have to say that is true. We are not different. We are one. What is your personal relationship to Islam at, at this time? I think I have to reflect what I first heard when I first heard Bawa, or what I first saw when I first saw Bawa, and likewise reflect back to the message that he was giving when he first came here. It was always the same message. There is a word, Islam, and in the world there is a religion called Islam. But Islam as a truth, or Islam as a reality, has an inner explanation that goes far, 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 far back to the time of the origin of, of the human being, the human form itself. And that Islam that he's speaking about is infinite purity, infinite light, infinite lightness. Uh, it's the one thing that, that is what we all have in common. It is the thing that is the source of our life, our soul, or our, our life form. And as Bawa then began to explain this to us over, for, for you and I, you know, eight or ten or twelve years and for other people further back twenty or thirty or forty years as he explained this one point over and over that Islam is purity. What we're listening to is a word, Islam. What we're understanding is a meaning, purity, pure light. If you keep striving for the meaning then you keep understanding the word better and better. So in my own case when I first heard him say Islam and then said it means purity I said well let me follow that meaning let me not be thrown by a word, but let me try to understand a meaning within a word. And consequently over, oh, I guess 10, 12 years now of trying to understand this word, uh, I've really understood much more of the meaning of it. And consequently my relation to what we will then call Islam is, uh, I think, a gradual movement toward that purity, toward the thing that is pure, toward the thing that is light, toward the thing that is lightness. I think the next logical question is, how do I, what does this purity look like? Well, how do I see it? How do I touch it? How do I feel it? It, it expresses itself as qualities, as, as actions, as uh, words that lighten the heart. Uh, but you can't touch it. You can't feel it. You can't hear it. You can only kind of understand it. It's sort of emanates from people and it sort of comes to people. We, we give it and receive it from each other. You can't touch it or feel it or taste it or smell it and yet it's unmistakable. It's purity. Alhamdulillah. Carolyn, I wonder if I could begin by asking you to reflect on the sweep of the last almost 13 years since Bala first uh, set foot in the United States in 1971, and on the rather remarkable transformation through which he has put so many of us um, to reach a point like today, where uh, this mosque has been constructed through the toil of uh, so many, and does really constitute a focal point for unity. What's your reflection over that broad sweep of time? My reflection of it? You know, what do I think about the whole thing? I just accept it for what it is. I, mean, I don't really reflect about it or think. Uh, it's a wonder. This is a wonder, I know. But uh, I just accept it as it comes. It took me a long time to get to that point. What do you mean? 
Well, I think it, uh, for most of us, we go through a lot of changes when things change. When things do change and we have no control over them, we go through changes. But I think by now I've finally reached, par at, least, at least partially reached the point where um, nothing surprises me. <laughs> Uh, even though everything's kind of constantly a wonder. Um. What significance for you does this mosque have uh, for this funny family of the fellowship? It is clearly a, a major event. It's, for me at least, more than just uh, physical construction. What, what does it mean to you? I, well, actually, I didn't make myself clear with the last answer because it's the same thing. It's it's like being in the eye of a hurricane. I mean, there isn't any actual reaction to me. Or Bawa has an analogy about the pot not tasting the current. You know, it just is. It's what it is. And I have no idea where it's going or what it's leading to or what it means. But it seems that whatever it is, we should f facilitate it moving forward, or at least not get in the way. Why do you feel it's good to facilitate it uh, moving forward? <coughs> because it so obviously comes about, uh, it's almost like an elemental thing drawing itself together, just like this thing appearing. It is happening, and... Uh, you mean it's going to happen, whatever it is. You mean that it sprang up sort of so quickly I mean, I mean, and so the, beautifully? All of it, the whole 13 years is like God's plan, and it, it seems to go in leaps and bounds. There may be a quiet period, and suddenly there's a big flurry of activity. And uh, you have to be able to sense when that's, when that's coming and move with it, or else uh, you're, left, you're left standing behind somewhere. The degree of surrender that went into this place is enormous. <laughs> You mean just so that it would be possible so to progress? So that it was so that it would be uh, pro progressing like it did. It uh, it had an awful lot of patience and surrender. Um, Bawa tends to pull together. Uh, he has described this: the fellowship as a watering hole that attracts every kind of animal. And so when you get a rhinoceros and an egret <laughs> deciding what kind of a place to pray in. <laughs> they're going to come up with different ideas. So it had a lot of surrender and uh, because there are so many different kinds of people here. Talk a little bit about the uh, multitude to have come and the, uh, the different faces, the different colors and backgrounds. At the dedication of this mosque, uh, the patron of the fellowship, who's an old gentleman, it, it must be in his, what, 70s, 80s, who's the father of... Uh, very um, uh, active member of the fellowship. Uh, he actually he addressed. He said, "When I first met Guru Bawa, uh, because that's how he remembered Guru Bawa, Bawa Mahadeen, Sheikh Bawa Mahadeen. When people first met Bawa ten years ago, he he was called Guru Bawa, and uh, the the trip around him." was the most formless, pinpointed, um, non, um, non-shariat. Shariat is the formal, formal practice of, of various, uh, of the law with a capital L. It was simply based on surrender to God in the silence of your heart and, and every minute, every second, every breath, surrendering that. The first people that were drawn to Bawa were drawn to him and drawn to that kind of teaching. And as the crowd around him got bigger and bigger, uh, I, I, as I see it now, as I have come to understand it, in an authentic teaching, uh, it's not like a single track, that there are c constant changes of pace. There are lessons that can only be done by shifting gears, by, by heavy and light and medium changes around you. Uh, the really exceptional thing is that the true meaning of Islam is isk is love, 
and Lam is light. So that, that those who have a love of the light of God are within that kind of Islam. Now the world has a different kind of Islam. It's an Islam that might say, we have the truth and nobody else does. But for this kind of Islam, which is the love of that light of God, all those who have that love are part of it. So it's said that all who are born are born in that state of Islam. All, all beings are within that state. And all beings have that state within themselves, have that state within their heart. And that state can be in any religion. That state of that love, of that light, can be in Judaism, it can be in Christianity, it can be in Islam, it can be in Hinduism. And that state is what this building is to nurture. And that nurturing brings about unity amongst people. And today is a day where that can be seen and manifest in the way people are treating each other and more importantly in the inner transformations of their hearts toward that light. That's what the building is for. Now to say does that bring happiness? It brings more than happiness. It brings reality. And reality has happiness but it's even greater than that. That's good. How has this gathering and this moment touched uh, your heart? Poetically speaking, though the living moss is in the heart we know, yet from the outer moss its hidden beauty doth blow. Well, today, from, from the little that we have observed and felt and experienced, and I'm sure all children would agree, has been a, a day of grace, a day of love, a day of unity, peace, fulfillment, and the bearing of the seed that Baba planted coming into shape through the patience, the love, and the grace that God has showered to this fellowship and all his children through Baba Mohiddi. You have um, been living in that mosque for several weeks now, in a small residential suite of rooms. Uh, yes. What does it feel like in there? Well, from the time we entered in, we have had, we have been constantly in a state of inward peace and tranquility. The same time we have been, you know, observing the mosque getting into shape with all the children of the fellowship working, you know, untiringly, devotedly, uh, selflessly. And I think they are the, the they, are, they were like the angels, you know, uh, that Baba has brought into play in the building of this mosque. And there is a poem which I have written for today's occasion, and I think with your permission I should read that here. Would you read that? Bismillah Rahman Rahim, the Masjid of Baba Muhayyaddin. O oh God's house of grace keeps rising through the gold and green. Reflecting the light of love, the sir of alif, lam and meem. While from the fragrance of this flower, that is Baba Muhayyaddin, comes the zikr of life with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. O oh, the hands of angels, Baba's children, with iman, brick and clay, did small the house of prayer so the senses could cease to play, and mind and desire and self, so the kalb could find its way to the arsh within, conquering the glitters of the dust that sway. We see the five domes of wisdom showering the light of grace. We see the minbar of faith flowering with love to embrace. The hearts of the seekers that with love and beauty dot lace. 
the souls of the beloved shimmering and standing face to face. The mihrab shines in all the purity, in shimmering gold and white. Here's where we battle with our envy, hatred and spite. Dispelling darkness around, we must ascend to that makam of light. That is oneness, unity, love, surrender, unveiling our inner sight. As one heart, one soul, one life, shall we gather here to ascend from this makam of darkness towards that station of light, then bend to Him in worship, in surrender, to Allah who, illallah who, and blend with His oneness, purity, love, and the veils of darkness rent. God's love, God's grace, God's beauty blows around this ship while in and around its portals the honey of wisdom we sip. We see the glow in the faces in the pond of love that dip. Pond of love is Baba Mahidin. It's divine nectar all the way or between the cup and the lip. Khadiriya, Sufiya, Tarika, the path that shows and blows its fragrance that is wisdom from within the kalp that glows with its beauty that is oneness from here love and compassion flows and with the ever powerful zikr of Allah illallah goes may all souls then with grace rise to that makam of light with iman sabr ikhlas or put that nafs to flight. May the nuri haq unveil the darkness, give man his sight to see the power that is Allah who coming before his sight. Say Allah, alhamdulillah, the sustainer, the nourisher is he, the beloved of the lovers, the link between you and me, the living life within man, man's formless mystery that gives life, form and color to the earth, air and the sea. May all hearts then give praise to the Rabbi Lalameen, that Lord of the universe, and may his prince, Baba Muhyiddin, enjoin all hearts so our souls as one could mingle and beam in unity, love, surrender and taste the power that is alif lam and me amin amin alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin from the abd mullah udmanuddin that's the title baba gave mullah udmanuddin so i'm always a joker <laughs> if i try to follow that up with words they'll Hell, so let me just give you a hug. <laughs> Thank you. These are some uh, little Sufi poems which uh, I would like to recite and then close the show for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking on this worldly life and the uh, impermanence of this illus illusory state and the, uh, and the futility of clinging to things of the world, the Sufi poet says, where laughter comes, there sorrow lies, mm. and sorrow burdens earthly ties. Mm. This game, this body and this world, is but a pack of lies, which cheats you now, and then it flies. Mm. The laughter here is not the spiritual laughter of the children here, but it is the enjoyment of the senses the enjoyment of things, the finite things, and that is where we get into trouble. Then the poet comes and says again, What is thy body and what thy soul? The age-old mystery yet to unfold. Remove the husk, the kernel behold, and see the silver turning gold. Then he says again, Who is a Sufi? None but he. Who knows this truth? Not you and me. 
he alone belongs to wisdom's tree that blooms from here to eternity. Alhamdulillah.